Hey guys, welcome back to another week of Mortgage Matters in Minutes. I'm your host, Brent Rasmussen, and here today to bring you your weekly Mortgage Matters in Minutes here a little early today, just before 3 o'clock on a gloomy Midwestern Omaha day here. Uh, but wanted to talk to you today about DTI, whatever do you mean? And uh, DTI is a word that we use very regularly and I know every industry has its own acronyms, its own terminology, its own words. Um, and many times when people contact us, they hear us use these terms and, and words and don't understand what they quite mean. So that's what we're here today to explain to you because DTI is probably one of the most important things that you would need to be concerned with in qualifying. And DTI can be a very simple uh, formula, which it very much is, and DTI can be learned with simple division or multiplication that you've learned in second or third grade. Uh, but we throw a wrench into things and use a different word or uh, abbreviation, and sometimes people just don't quite understand what it is. So first, let's talk about what is DTI. Uh, the letter DTI uh, stands for debt to income. So anytime we see the word to, it's a, a division problem. So we take the debts that you have and we divide it by the income that you make. It's as simple as that. So really when we give examples of this, we try to use very round numbers because some people are great with math and we want to get down to the infinite detail and some people don't really like and enjoy math. It depends on what brain you are. So why is DTI so important? Why is your debt to income so important? Because this is the main factor on what allows you to have as much debt as you may have in relationship to your income. So generally when we speak about mortgages, I think there's three major points that you need to qualify for a loan. One is credit, two is DTI, and three is down payment. Generally, once we get past those three tickets or those three items, you're generally approved. Obviously, there's rules inside of those of what we can use, what we can't use. But as long as we meet those general three characteristics, you're there, you're pre-approved, you're ready to go to get the loan accomplished. Then it's just a matter of providing the paperwork for what it is. So again, debt to income ratio. Let's talk about how we calculate this math. So let's do a very simple uh, formula and say your income you make is $1,000 a month. Why do we use $1,000? Because it's very easy to round off and do math out of that. Let's say all of our debts total to $250 a month. And again, we don't care about balances. We care about what your payments are. So if your payments are $250 and you make $1,000, we can set that to have a 25% debt to income ratio. So again, how do we calculate in real world debt to income ratio? We're gonna add up all of the debt payments on your credit report. So we're gonna add up your car loans, your student loans, mortgages, credit cards, anything that shows up as a payment on your credit report history. And then we're also gonna factor in that new payment that you have to qualify to buy that new house or to refinance that new loan. We're gonna add up all those payments and we're gonna divide that by your income. That's a percentage. If you're at 100%, that's very, very, very bad. That means all of your debt payments go to your gross income. And we again use gross income, which is income before your taxes. So generally people might make 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars, 60, 70, 80 thousand dollars, right? We'll divide that by 12 to get to a monthly basis. That's the income. And then we add up all the debts and we divide that by your income. What is the formula or ratio that we're looking for? We just mentioned if you have a hundred percent debt to income ratio, that's very bad. When it comes to mortgage loans, you want to be somewhere between 30 to 45 percent. It all depends on your credit profile and your asset situation. I would say generally speaking, if you use a 40 percent formula, you're sitting pretty good if you have great credit. But we've seen scenarios happen where FHA might take a higher debt to income ratio than conventional. Or conventional is going to take a lower debt to income ratio because the credit scores are significantly lower. Or the same with FHA, they might take a lower debt to income ratio because the credit scores might be very low on the spectrum of what the credit scores could be. So while we can never tell every person exactly what debt to income gets approved because the softwares that we run these loans through are automated, we plug them in 
and that's the answer whether it's yes or no on the debt to income ratio. But generally, those that are working in the industry every day, we can see this window of getting close to 45% is kind of pushing it. Uh, can it get approved above 45? We've seen a few, and that does happen. Is it regularly? No. Generally, between that 40 to 45 percent, debt to income ratio is what does get accepted as long as you have perfect credit and good uh, asset situation in that regards. So, if you don't qualify because maybe your debt to income ratio is too high, what can you do to fix your debt to income ratio? So, again, it's a division program. So, if we're at 100 percent debt to income ratio, how do we get it down to 50 percent? There's only two ways of doing that either lower your debt payments or make more income. And both of those two, sometimes we explain to clients, might be very challenging. If you're limited on the amount of income that you can make because you don't receive commission bonus overtime, and maybe you only get a short, small raise every year, that might not be the easiest way to get you qualified with a lower debt to income ratio. Maybe the only way then is obviously to pay down your debts to get lower payments to be able to qualify. Is this something that we see every single day? It completely is. And I'm surprised we've waited this many weeks into it to speak about debt to income ratio. And we call it DTI just because it is such an important factor in qualifying for a mortgage. So if you have questions about how to calculate DTI, what your DTI looks like, how do we get that DTI better? Again, it's a simple formula, debts divided by income. Either we gain more income, lower debts, to get qualified. There's no other secret besides making those things happen. And all mortgage lenders out there are abiding by the same rules and debt to income ratio is one of those that we all abide by. We don't set what those debt to income ratio rules are. The softwares and the loans that are out there that provide it tell us what qualifies or doesn't. Again, I'm Brent Rasmussen. I'm always here to answer any questions here at Mortgage Specialist. You can reach out to us at 402 991 5153, or we're just a phone call away. Uh, and also on our website at mtg-specialist.com. And we'll see you guys all here next week. Have a great one. Mortgage Specialists. Driven. Trusted. Reliable.